We're going to start doing some more night vision stuff around here pretty soon, but before we get into that, I'd like to lay some groundwork. So this video is going to be about the night vision basics. If you already know a lot about night vision, this is not the video for you, so I'll see you on the next one. This is going to be some really entry-level stuff, talking about all the different pieces you need to put together a night vision setup, as well as basic nomenclature. So when we talk about night vision setups and gear in the future, you'll have an easier time following along. On your screen right now are two different night vision monoculars. The one on the right is a PVS-14, which is a typical entry-level monocular. The one on the left is an ATN Corp NVM-14, one of several different models of PVS-14 monocular alternatives. Today we're going to stick with the PVS-14. It's important to keep in mind that the PVS-14 is the housing, the body, the lenses, and the controls of the night vision device. The actual light amplification is provided by the intensifier tube, which is located inside the housing. Both of the devices I have are using, I believe, MX-10160 intensifier tubes. The tube is responsible for most of the performance characteristics of the device. The PVS-14 here has a significantly higher performance intensifier tube than the one that is in the NVM-14. So if we were to swap the tubes between the devices, the bulk of the performance would carry over from the PVS to the NVM. There are aspects of the PVS housing that are better than the NVM housing, and we can talk about those more in a comparison video some other time. There are two characteristics of intensifier tubes that we have to distinguish between, automatic gain and auto gating. Gain is essentially the power boost for the image. A tube with automatic gain will try to set the brightness level appropriately for the level of ambient illumination. So when you look at a darker area, it will turn the brightness up and vice versa. This is not to be confused with auto-gating. Auto-gating is more of a protection feature than a performance feature. Auto-gated tubes switch on and off rapidly to prevent too much light exposure to the intensifier, which can damage it. Both of the night vision monoculars here have automatic gain. The PVS-14 is the only one with auto-gating. Units with auto-gating will produce a high-pitched electronic whining sound when they're on. Kind of like the sound an old CRT monitor or television makes when it's in another room. That's a reference that doesn't date me or this video at all. Depending on the specific unit, the sound of the auto-gating may be infuriating, it may be merely noticeable, or it may be completely inaudible. Also depending on your age and amount of hearing loss. Just because you have automatic gain doesn't mean you can look at bright lights without worrying about damaging your intensifier tube. Auto-gating, on the other hand, should protect the tube from accidental exposure to bright light, though you still don't want to be careless. If you look at a bright light source for just a bit with a regular tube or an auto-gated tube, you may get some temporary burn-in, or after-image. Almost like sunspots with your human eyeball. These usually go away after a few seconds. The process of making image intensifiers is kind of like making microchips. As anybody who's tried to overclock a CPU can tell you, not all chips are created equal, even if they have the same specs on paper. And the same is true for intensifier tubes. Each one is unique like a precious snowflake. They have different performance specs and often different patterns of blemishes in the tube. The best of the best intensifier tubes aren't always available to poor, unfortunate civilians like you and me, so you stand a pretty good chance of having some minor blemishes even on a good intensifier. You can easily see these blemishes if you point the device at a blank white wall, but minor blemishes are hard to notice when walking around in the woods. As it turns out, the night is dark and full of blemishes. So onto the PVS-14 itself. These use a single AA battery. The battery compartment is on the front of the housing. Also on the front is a manual gain control knob. This is only applicable if you have an intensifier tube with manual gain, which this one does not. Also on the front of the device is the light sensor and the IR illuminator lamp. Night vision devices aren't magic. There needs to be at least some light for even a high performance intensifier tube to amplify. The built-in illuminator on these devices is for short-range illumination only. I think the manual specifically says it's for map reading. It can aid in navigation, but that's about it. The front objective lens has a rubber cap with a pinhole in it. If you're using the device in a bright environment, you put the cap on and you're still able to see through the tiny pinhole without letting enough light in to flood the image or damage the device. The front lens rotates to set the focus point. Night vision devices have an extremely narrow depth of field owing to the massive aperture of the lens, like a fancy camera with the aperture blown all the way open. Usually you'll have the focal point set pretty far out and you just deal with the blurriness on closer objects. On the back is the eyepiece, which rotates to change the diopter. You adjust the diopter to work with your specific human eyeball and then you leave it in place. The front focus ring is all you have to mess with in normal operation. 
The rear of the device also has the power switch. On the PVS-14 at least, you rotate it one position to turn it on, then pull it out and rotate a second click to turn on the illuminator. PVS-14s have a standard tripod mounting hole, which is how they connect to different mounting interfaces. When it comes to mounting your night vision device, you need to get from the mounting hole all the way to your chosen piece of headgear, which takes three pieces. The first piece is the swing arm. This one is a standard USGI J arm. They're cheap to buy and cheaply made, but they do the trick. On the helmet side, we have the mount, which in this case is a military surplus Rhino 2. Not great, but functional. And then on the helmet itself is the shroud, in this case a military surplus NVG one-hole shroud attached to a military surplus ACH helmet. So we have the helmet, the shroud, the mount, the swing arm, and finally the night vision device. You can spend almost as much again as your NV device costs on different swing arms, mounts, and shrouds that offer additional capability. We'll talk about that some other time. When it comes to shooting under night vision, you have two options. One is active, which is where you're aiming using something like an IR laser. The other is passive, where you're trying to aim through your optic using the night vision device. You may have seen a lot of red dots advertised as having night vision settings. Basically, these are very low power modes that are hard to see with the naked eye, but show up very bright under night vision. One thing to keep in mind with passive aiming is that some optics have better light transmission than others. A big part of that is the size of the optic window, and the other part of it is glass quality. So the image you see through an EOTech with a very large window is going to be a lot brighter and clearer than the image you see through something like an Aimpoint T2, which has a very small window. Similarly, the image through the T2 will be brighter and clearer than through a Sig Romeo or a Holosun, because even though they have the same size objective lens, the glass quality on the Aimpoint is better. If you're using an IR illuminator, there is more light available for the intensifier to work with, so you'll be able to see through the optic better. However, that's of limited use because the whole point of shooting passively is that you don't advertise your position to other night vision users by blasting IR illumination all over the place. A higher performance intensifier tube will have an easier time seeing through a red dot than a low performance one. So if you have a lower performance tube, you may get a lot more mileage out of an EOTech. If you have a super nice high spec tube, it probably won't matter as much. As far as active illumination shooting goes, there are all sorts of IR illuminators, lasers, and combo units out there. We can talk more about those some other time, along with different mounts, helmets, and night vision devices proper. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about night vision, or if you have any requests about topics you'd like me to cover, let me know. See you next time.